No, Linus, come back! You became the one you swore to destroy! Just the other day, Linus Tech Tips dropped this video. You don't need a new PC. And like LTT videos tend to be, it's really well produced and overall a relatively good video that I'll highly recommend you watching. That's until it gets to the OS section where they recommend something called Atlas OS. Now, if you've not seen the rest of the video, basically it's about taking a big box store PC that was, you know, $150 Canadian, $110 US, making some minor upgrades to it and seeing how much you can get out of an old system like this and seeing if you can turn it into like a reasonable gaming system. It's a great concept for a video. But we seriously need to talk about this Atlas OS recommendation. Now, this is not one of these cases where a Linux user is telling you to use Linux. For context, I do run Linux. I am using Arch Linux. I don't care if you use Windows. I don't care if you use Linux. Use whatever you want to use on your computer. I'm also not telling you to just go and buy a better computer. I totally understand the appeal of wanting a much lighter Windows install. However, there are serious security problems that exist with Atlas that LTT just completely brushed over. Now, to be fair, there was a brief mention of some of the issues. What's so, the compromise? What are we losing? you're losing telemetry? Automatic updates. Oh, That's okay. probably something they turned off. I don't know. I actually haven't looked that closely at it. What's so that? neither the cameraman, David, Anthony, who set up the system, or Linus, actually know what the security implications were. And they show this page for about six seconds. Now, some of these things aren't security issues, like Windows Restore Point not existing. It's annoying, but not a security problem. Remote desktop being disabled, probably better for it to be disabled if you're not using it. But some of these other things are very serious. The first problem, Windows Defender doesn't work. And this is said also in the Atlas documentation. Atlas gets rid of the following services and features. Windows Defender. Now, Windows Defender is the built-in antivirus system, and nowadays, it's actually pretty good. And you can get by getting rid of Windows Defender. You can get by without having any sort of antivirus system whatsoever. But please, please be very careful. I highly encourage you, if you're going to use this system and you're going to connect it to the internet, use uBlock Origin or some other content blocking system 24 seven. Never get rid of it, especially if you go to any slightly sketchy website. Also be incredibly careful about the software you install. Only install it if you're 100% sure about it and you're installing it from the official source. Don't go and download you know, VLC from some third party website, get it from VLC. You can probably be okay but I would not be comfortable running Windows like this. I would go and install some third-party antivirus system just for the peace of mind. Now, the second problem and the reason I highly recommend the content blocker is CPU mitigations are disabled. Now, the most well-known here a Spectre and Meltdown. These were very serious CPU speculative exploits from a couple of years back, but other exploits exist to get fixed with these mitigations. Atlas says, on Atlas, we have them disabled by default to improve performance for older CPUs, which it absolutely will do, as it is very unlikely that a user will be affected from this change. However, some newer CPUs like Zen 4 CPUs can actually be negatively impacted if you disable mitigations due to the newer CPUs being optimized for these mitigations. And this is absolutely true. On the modern AMD and Intel platforms, they have hardware fixes in place to get rid of this problem. So even if you get rid of the mitigations in your operating system, it's no longer an issue at the actual hardware level. That's in the context of modern CPUs. In the case of the CPU that Linus is using, this is a 7th gen Intel processor. A 7th gen Intel processor is well within the affected range. 
anything newer than the 8th gen Intel CPU should have the hardware mitigations in place, so any of the software mitigations aren't necessarily needed. But in the case of certain CPUs, you actually don't want to get rid of them anyway because of, you know, different optimizations. But this is when it comes to the early exploits. I think a lot of people don't realize that when Spectre and Meltdown left the news, the exploits didn't go away. There have been newer variants of Spectre that affect various different CPUs. For example, we have an exploit from 2019. This is called SwapGS. This affects from... Ivy Bridge to Sky Lake, I want to say. And then earlier this year in February, there was another new Spectre exploit called Spectre V6. Even though the problem isn't getting anywhere near as much attention as these newer exploits are nowhere near as serious, these are still exploits nonetheless, and they are still being patched, and they are still in the wild. However, you could argue you don't need Spectre and Meltdown mitigations as the most likely place for it to be exploited is through JavaScript in your web browser. And assuming you're running, you know, an up-to-date web browser, it's probably going to be fine. And you also have content blockers as well dealing with some of the more sketchy stuff. I personally wouldn't risk it on my system, but it's not the most egregious thing Atlas is doing. Side note, as a gamer, if you play online games, you probably don't want to get rid of mitigations anyway. Certain anti-cheat systems require Spectre and Meltdown mitigations to be enabled. There is a script to easily go and re-enable them, but this is not mentioned at all by LTT. They do mention, oh, there'll be some bugs, but that's a pretty big problem if the focus is gaming. They also brush over Windows Update not working. I know Windows updates can be very annoying, especially when they're happening when you have things you actually want to be doing, but you always want to make sure your system is up to date. Windows updates not only address bugs, but also vulnerabilities in your system. Leaving those open allow your system to be exploited. But all of this stuff so far is baby stuff. You don't need exploits with the last thing that they didn't even mention. What they didn't mention is UAC. User account control is a built-in feature on Windows which is used to protect your computer from malicious software. When UAC is disabled, which it is disabled, everything will be run as administrator. You do not need exploits on your system if all code is running as administrator. And Atlas says they have disabled it by default to make the system more responsive. The difference with disabling UAC is going to be very minor, especially compared to getting rid of mitigations. And under basically no circumstance do you want to run a system with UAC disabled. If you are going to disable UAC, it needs to be a 100% conscious decision where you are fully aware of the consequences. So you know if you try to run an application and you get this prompt on your screen being like, hey stupid, do you want to give permission for malware.exe to run? That prompt is a part of UAC. If you get rid of UAC, those prompts will never appear, but also the application can just run. It automatically has permission to do whatever it wants. If you ever make a mistake and download a bit of malware, this can do whatever it wants on your system. And now that Linus has recommended basically a ransomware developer's wet dream to millions of users, there are going to be people running this system and there are going to be malware developers trying to exploit this incredibly irresponsible recommendation. I'm not saying absolutely don't run Atlas. I can totally see why it's appealing. When they did their performance testing, they were getting a lot of extra out of this system that just wouldn't have been possible with a regular vanilla Windows install. It makes a lot of sense why you would use this. But please, 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 please do not run it by default. At a bare minimum, re-enable UAC. If you don't do that, you are just asking for trouble. Preferably, I would also recommend re-enabling mitigations but 
at least UAC. Do not run a system that is internet connected without UAC enabled. I've been a fan of Linus Tech Tips for years now. I was watching years before Homeroom Water Cooling. I grew up watching this channel. They have put out some incredible videos and they've put out some incredible tech advice. But this video after one day has 2 million views and is some of the most dangerous advice that Linus has ever given. I really hope they pull this video down, give some sort of attraction, mention it on the WAN show, at least post something on Twitter, because this recommendation cannot just stand by itself. And I hope that anyone using Atlas that didn't know about these problems now reconsiders their choice, or at least goes and re-enables the things that desperately need to be re-enabled. But maybe you think I'm full of it, and running a system that's free reign on admin privileges is totally fine and not incredibly dangerous. I would love to know your reasoning why, and especially if anyone from the Atlas team sees this. If someone from the Atlas team sees this, stop disabling UAC. That is not a good idea to fix performance. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. So if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrabs, Deli, Bear, Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And this is not the first time that Linus has used a really soft version of Windows. Look up Linus Sebastian, Windows 9. <laughs>